Hi friends, welcome to This Prepared Life. I'm Allison, and today I'm gonna show you how I make granola. I'm gonna share my recipe with you, and you can follow along as I make two different versions from the same recipe. So let's go ahead and jump into making some granola. I keep oats in my short-term layer and my long-term layer, and granola is one of the recipes I make often weekly, bi-weekly, I make a batch of granola. We like to eat it as cereal. We like to eat it on yogurt. And it is a great way to one, not only save money in your budget. Have you seen the price of granola at the store? It's a great way to know what is in your food and also to know how to use ingredients that store well long-term in your kitchen. So let's get started. I already have my oven heating to 300 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm gonna go ahead and prep my pans. Since I am making a double batch, I have two cookie sheets, and I'm going to line these with parchment paper. It is going to make it much easier to remove the granola from the pan after it's baked. Granola can be a little bit sticky, and depending on how sticky yours is, it can kind of cement itself to the cookie sheet. And so I use some parchment paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these two lined with parchment paper and set them aside. Rather than have to get out my scissors and cut these perfect, I just lay them in here and fold them. And it's okay if it sticks out on the edges. So let's get our other cookie sheet. So we have two cookie sheets prepped and ready. I'm gonna set these over here on my stove top and we will use those later. So next thing we're gonna do is get started mixing our ingredients together. And this recipe is so easy to make. If you have never made granola before, you're gonna be incredibly surprised at how easy this is. Let's go ahead and set this bowl aside because I don't quite need it yet. And I'm using a rather large bowl because I am making a double batch. We are gonna get our coconut oil melted and I'm going to measure it using a standard measuring cup, but I'm gonna put it into this glass one so that I can melt it. And since I'm making a double batch, I need an entire cup of a neutral flavored oil. And if you would like the recipe to this, I will link it in the description over on my blog. And that will be a printable recipe that you can just download and print. I am gonna get a bigger spatula because this is down at the bottom and my hands are getting greasy. So I am just scooping this coconut oil out and coconut oil hardens in cooler temperatures. So here in North Idaho, my house is not incredibly hot this time of year. And you can see I am not exact in my measurements. So I need one cup, so this is a third of a cup. So I'm gonna do two more of these. Coconut oil is something that I keep in my prepper pantry. It's a great oil to keep on hand for cooking, for, for all kinds of things. And it lasts a considerably long time. I like to get coconut oil from Azure Standard. I had just about enough in this jar. Almost thought I wasn't gonna get enough. Let me scrape this last little bit. So one benefit of if you buy items in these great glass jars from Azure Standard, I wash these out and reuse them. They actually sell these jars and I do buy them just empty as jars and use them in my pantry, in my kitchen. I absolutely love them. But buying the coconut oil in these jars essentially gives me a free jar. I'm gonna go ahead and get this melted and I will be right back. All right, if you follow me over on Instagram, you know that I love aprons and I went to go put on an apron um, before I started cooking and they were all, all in a desperate need of a wash. So I'm going apronless today and I'm sure my clothes are going to reflect that by the time we're done. All right, I'm gonna go grab that coconut oil and let's get started mixing up our granola. I have our one cup of, gran uh, one cup of granola. I have our one cup of coconut oil here and I'm gonna go ahead and just pour this in the bowl. I'm gonna scrape it a little bit. 
and get all that in there. And then I am gonna get this jar out of the way. New jar for my pantry. Now it's time to add our sweetener and I will either use maple syrup or honey and then I alter the spices depending on what sweetener I'm using. This time I am using maple syrup and I just get this at Costco. Maple syrup is another great prepper pantry item. It lasts a considerable amount of time. So our recipe says we need a half a cup of sweetener. Again, I'm doubling this recipe. So we are going to add one cup of sweetener. Just add it right in, go ahead and scrape it out. All right, now we are going to add the rest of our ingredients. So we need a half a teaspoon salt for a single batch. Again, we're making a double. So we are gonna add one teaspoon of salt. I don't like my granola really salty, so I actually probably add a little less. So we've got one teaspoon of salt, cinnamon. I love cinnamon in my granola. And the recipe calls for half a teaspoon. We're gonna add a teaspoon. That's probably a little over a teaspoon, but I do like cinnamon. We're also gonna add some nutmeg and just a pinch. Nutmeg is a pretty strong spice. I buy this in bulk, nutmeg and just keep it in jars in um, my short-term layer. I don't typically store spices long-term because I rotate those through just to um, maximize their potency because spices don't really go bad, but they do lose flavor. I am also gonna add a little bit of vanilla. Maple and vanilla are really good together. Honey and vanilla are really good together. So either sweetener you use, and I'm just gonna add a teaspoon teaspoon of vanilla. All right, now we're gonna give this a stir and then we're gonna add our oats. And it's not gonna like fully mix in together because you know we are mixing an oil in with watery ingredients, but we're just giving it as good of a mix as we can to mix those spices in. All right, now we are gonna add our oats. The recipe calls for three cups of oats. Again, I'm doubling, so I'm gonna add six cups and I need to grab a measuring cup. All right, I got my measuring cup and I got my bucket of oats. When I make a double batch of granola, I tend to just go get my bucket from my short-term pantry because um, if I just use my kitchen canister, I would have to immediately refill it. So this is a gamma seal lid. This is one of the reasons I like these lids because I can just take the lids on and off. I have a scoop in here. All my short-term buckets get their own scoops. I get these at Cash and Carry or Chef Store. Um, and the scoop just rotates anytime I open a new bucket. So we're gonna add six cups of oats two, three, four, five, six. And this is where you can eyeball it. After you stir this together, if it still looks too wet, go ahead and add some more oats to it. You don't want it to be incredibly dry, but you don't want it to be runny. So we are stirring this together. So just keep stirring until it is well combined. And if you prefer to make a raw granola, you can toss this in your dehydrator at a low temperature and um, dry it out that way. I just bake it. We like the crunch. So this is a little wet, but I think it looks okay. You can see that consistency, all the oats are well coated. I am going to be making, you can't see me. <laughs> I'm gonna be making a double batch, like I said. So I'm gonna take half this granola out and put it onto a cookie sheet. And we're gonna have just a plain batch of maple, vanilla, cinnamon, nutmeg, 
granola, and then I'm going to mix some seeds and other stuff into the rest that is left in this bowl and make a nuttier version that my husband is going to like. So let's grab that cookie sheet. All right, this is that cookie sheet that we prepped earlier. And I'm just gonna take about half, about half this. I think that looks good. And right now we are gonna just spread this out in a thin layer on this cookie sheet. Doesn't have to be perfect because you are gonna stir this halfway through baking but I do try and get it a little thin so that um, it can get nice and crunchy. Okay, so first batch of granola is ready to go in the oven. For the second batch of granola, I added pumpkin seeds, amaranth, and raw sunflower seeds. You can really customize this recipe and add any nuts or seeds that your family enjoys eating. We also love putting in coconut or pecans. While I wait for that to bake, I am headed out to turn the sprinklers on in the greenhouse um, because I have some carrots growing in there. So I want to give them some water. Lovely with all the fall colors this year. I just absolutely love North Idaho. So this is not ideal. Um, and I planted these carrots uh, kind of on a spur of the moment without a lot of thought. Um, I think they should grow. I've never planted them this late in the greenhouse, so we'll see. We are possibly supposed to get some snow next week. Um, we'll see what happens, but I am watering them in hopes of a late fall, early winter carrot harvest. That is the last of the drip irrigation and hosing that is out. We did all the drip irrigation that was in the garden. We got that, um, blown out last week in preparation for freezing temperatures. So, um, this drip irrigation is the last to go and I will probably leave it up until uh, it snows and then I'm going to blow it out and I will have to water that by hand. But uh, for now, hoping for some, some more carrots. So I'm going to leave that running. It usually has a timer on it right here, but I have taken those inside because they don't do well if they freeze. That was the dogs. I don't know what was wrong big logging truck going by um, but let's head inside and check on that granola in the oven all right so this is the first batch of granola and you can see it is starting to get nice and brown i'm going to go ahead and cook this for just a couple more minutes and then we will take it out and i will show you that first batch of granola is already out of the oven and the second batch with the seeds in it i am getting ready to stir so I'm gonna go ahead and show you what that looks like. So about halfway through the baking time, you want to stir the granola around and really we're just stirring it. It's and then spread it back in a thin layer. You can see that this looks incredibly wet. And that is the oil and the sweetener. And so we have this all spread out again, and we're gonna get this back in the oven. If you like your granola more loose with smaller pieces, as soon as this comes out of the oven, give it a stir. And as it cools, keep stirring it. If you like your granola more in chunks, when this comes out of the oven, tamp it down with your spatula, just smush it down. And as it cools, it will harden into more chunks rather than loose pieces. 
So we like chunky granola. So when it comes out of the oven, I do tamp it down. So I'm gonna set this aside to finish cooling. We are waiting for that other batch to come out of the oven, the one with the seeds and nuts. And I'm gonna show you that as soon as it comes out so you can see what it looks like. And as you can see, I have a batch of pumpkins waiting to go in the oven as soon as the granola is done. November is all about winter squash and pumpkins in this prepared life community. And part of the pantry ebook that goes out every month is all about baking and pumpkins and also oats are in there this month. So a um, lot going on in the homestead kitchen today. We have 15 more minutes left on this timer for the seed granola. So I will see you back here in a little bit. This granola is cool and it is ready to be stored on my pantry shelves. That second batch is still over there cooling a little bit. So I have a jar funnel and I absolutely love this metal jar funnel, some glass jars and then rings and flat lids. And these are used flat lids. I reuse um, the lids from my canned food on dry goods in my pantry. And here is this granola. Doesn't that look delicious? So we are gonna go ahead and get this all broken up and put into a jar. So the first thing I do is, that's gonna be too loud, is I just use the parchment paper to get it all broken up in the middle. And then I'm gonna use the funnel to get it in the jar. This is gonna be loud. And you can use a spoon or just use your hands for this. So now we just put this lid on because we are eating this right away. It is not, granola does not store long-term. It's too oily. Um, I just, I'm not gonna vacuum seal it or anything. Just put the lid on and this is going on our pantry shelves. 